Hi there, it's Kareem the BB from Keepers Nursery and today I'm going to make hopefully a nice short and concise video about how to plant apple trees the way that I plant apple trees. So, the first thing you need is an apple tree. So hopefully you've bought the tree from us. Uh, you can obviously buy apple trees from other people. This is what we call a bare root tree. I'll just give you a demonstration of what the different parts of the tree are. Um, important part of the tree, nice label with the plant, UK plant passport. Make sure that you buy trees with UK plant passports if you are in the UK. Um, it's, it's important that we uh, try and support what EFRA are doing, obviously, and it's a legal requirement. So, um, this top part is the, uh, well, this is the variety part. I don't know what the technical term for it is. But this is, uh, it should say on the label what variety it is, uh, this is actually one of my seedling apples, this is number 23. Um, and down here is the graft union. So there's still some tape here from when, we gra when I grafted the tree. So this tree would have been grafted in August 2022. So at that stage it would have been a rootstock and, uh, I mean the rootstock would have been up here and it's been cut and it was cut in March 2023, so I'm still in the picture. My wife's filming, luckily. She's uh, she's she's been very helpful. This is the uh, Christmas holidays. So Merry Christmas to everyone. If uh, hence the jumper and the nice finger paint uh, nail nail varnish. Yeah, nail varnish. I have a black one too. Um, yeah, you can see that's where the graft union is. So you might be able to see that's where it's sort of healed. Um, so this is a chip budding graft union. If you buy trees that are bench graft, they'll have a slightly different looking union on them. So all this growth is what's happened in one year. And generally speaking, um, yeah, apple trees will put on a you know a, a meter and a bit of growth in the first year. Um, you have got a nice healthy root at the bottom. These are M26 roots, so it says it on here. And one of the most important things when you do plant any tree try and keep a record i plant trees and i don't keep records and it's really frustrating because you really it's not it doesn't take much uh, draw a nice picture draw a nice overhead plan cool it's raining um and yeah you can see there's lots of roots on here so when you want to plant the tree um you can see there are lots of roots obviously you're going to have to dig a hole bigger than the roots um so here you've got one leggy root and what you can do before planting is actually prune roots although that sounds kind of mental you actually prune the top of the tree and that uh, encourages branching the same thing happens with the roots so down here if you just cut that off what it will encourage is rather than you having a root that you sort of jam in and bend which will actually cause the root to continue to circle and sort of stay in, a, in, in the hole that you've made rather than encouraging the roots to go out. What you do by cutting here is you get like an explosion of branch, you know, like root hairs coming out. So it's the same as if you cut the top of the tree, you get branching. Um, so I will, don't know how much it's gonna rain. Um, yeah, I'll dig a hole for this, but yeah, you can prune quite a lot. Uh, I've got a second tree here again, it's quite good. Down here there's one strong root. Slight damage when I was digging up the tree, but that won't affect it too much, but you could cut it again. Um, but anyway, I'm going to carry on to what you to um, So, importantly, you have to pick somewhere to plant the tree. Um, obviously you don't want to plant an apple tree too closely to somewhere where there is competition, so I can't do that for everyone, but obviously don't plant it right next to a massive oak tree because the roots from the massive oak tree will take all the water and will compete this young tree. This young tree needs to establish. Just to pick, pick somewhere where it's going to be really happy. First year, you have to water that tree a lot so that the tree, the roots establish. Once the roots are happy, the tree won't be stressed. It won't be as prone to attacks from aphids and everything else. And it will generally start growing quite well. This can take at least a year or two in England where you do get quite droughty first seasons, you do need to water that tree in the first year quite a lot. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough because we will get about two months in the summer where we don't get a drop of rain and that will really stress out a tree that's recently been planted. So let's say I chose this spot to plant it. Nothing around it, that's great. So obviously you need a spade. You could wear gloves, but I'm not wearing gloves for this video. 
So dig out a hole. So obviously if you find that when you dig a hole, there's like an ancient, ancient foundations, brickworks or something, maybe pick somewhere slightly different, or you could just dig a big hole and dig out the foundations. You don't want to pick, you don't want to plant somewhere. I mean, I can't say for every um, soil type and everything, what, you know, what's the best thing to do. There are preferable locations to plant trees some soil types if you've got heavy clay and it's boggy trees aren't going to be too happy you might get things like phytophthora which is like root rot if you've got a very sort of boggy area where it's planting likewise if it's very sandy and it dries out too much the tree is going to sort of struggle because um the uh, the, the moisture in the soil is going to disappear and basically if you are somewhere where the soil is very very bad or, well it's just poor you kind of have to go up a step in the rootstock. So if you have stronger roots, that tree will be able to cope with more stressful conditions. Um, the, so so if, you, if you wanted to go with, let, let's stick with apples. If you pick M27, the dwarfing rootstocks, these are quite delicate, frail roots. They really need pampering, so they're not gonna cope with bad conditions. Um, but if you then pick you know, an M25 rootstock, that will pretty much grow anywhere. That's the biggest rootstock which we offer on apples. So, if, uh, if you can see the soil, it's quite a nice sort of loamy soil. It's not too clay. I've dug a, quite a big hole here. Now, I'll put my RHS hat on as a uh, <laughs> fruit and veg herb committee. Yes, love? Okay, well, sorry, I'm still doing the video, so can you go back and I'll be five minutes. Keep working away. S sorry for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, RHS hat. I've dug a hole, it looks fine. It's, it's big enough for... Let's see this one. It's big enough for the, the tree root, see? It fits in. Now, that is good, but the RHS, as a fruit and veg and herb committee uh, member, I should say there are a few things which you can do to improve this hole. And I have to say, planting a tree takes a lot more effort than digging these. These trees took like 10 seconds each to dig up. If I had to plant 10 trees, I'd be knackered. But actually, the soil here, the soil here is pretty good. Um, one thing you can do is they don't say do a round hole. They say you want to make the hole as angular as possible because those angles are where the roots, if it's, if it's round, basically the roots, if they hit an edge, they'll just go round and round and round. And you can get a situation where the roots don't actually penetrate further than the wall you've made, especially if it's a heavy clay. And that's the same with the base. If the base is just a flat pan, firstly, water will sit in there like a puddle and you'll get rotten roots, but also the roots won't be able to go any further because it will crust over when it's hard. So what you want to do is you want to sort of break up the sides a bit. So you want to sort of make angles make holes in the sides they do say sometimes put a square hole is better than a round hole it is but if you can really sort of hack away at it and obviously a bigger hole is better than a small hole and at the bottom we've got loose soil you want to so we're starting to hit the clay at the bottom here you can see it's slightly red or orange so you want to make sort of angles and cut it up a bit now we're not planting a massive sort of two-year-old tree. So those roots, this hole is now big enough easily for this tree. So we've got our tree and we want to put it in our hole. You can see it fits quite comfortably. None of the roots are sort of bent over to get in. You want to plant the tree nice and straight. Now let's assume you're planting a freestanding tree. Easy peasy, that's what so that means. It's a tree that you're going to plant in the ground. It's just going to grow upright. At some stage, you're going to cut the leader um, at a certain height to promote branches. It might just be a um, it might be a bush train tree, so you just have a crown up here. You might let it grow up a bit more, so you might train a new leader, get it to grow as a half standard. You might train it as a vertical cordon or something of that form. Um, you could also cut it lower and start training it as an espalier. That would be with um, a more, more decent framework, which I'll show you in a sec. But um, 
yeah, the other way of planting it would obviously be if you are planting an oblique cordon. So you see the, the trees over here. <laughs> These are all oblique cordons, so they're planted at 45 degrees. The important thing is if you are planting an oblique cordon, you could either plant it this way or this way. Now, um, this is the fun part of the video because I'm going to snap one of my trees. Um, if you were to plant the tree this way, so with the graft union facing down, that puts a heck of a lot of weight on this joint. That joint is the weak part of the tree. This tree is a little bit worse. I'll just I'll do it on this one. So this is the worst part. Of the, so, so, so if you watch, if, if, if I was to, this is the correct way to plant the tree because there is quite a lot of strength in there. And if you put a lot of pressure, I'm trying to break the tree this way, it doesn't break. So that's the correct way to plant it. Now, if you plant it this way, watch it, it's just gonna snap. It just pops off. That tree is now dead, it's useless. Um, luckily, I've got loads of trees, so I'm not that fussed about it. But <laughs> we're not gonna snap this one. So hopefully you've learned that lesson. That's the weak point. And gosh, it's bad weather. Um, Yes, uh, so also the other thing to consider is also prevailing winds. We've had some very windy days recently. Now, with prevailing winds, we have a southwesterly wind which comes across like this way. So, logic would say have the strong point facing into the wind. So, if the wind comes across just like this, it's going to be like that. Do not plant the tree where the strong prevailing winds will come. With the graft union facing away because if you do that again i'm not i won't snap this one but it was just as easy i could have just snapped this one and then there is a point to prove as well with where you put your stakes you want to again have it facing in ideally put two stakes in stakes are ugly so you don't want to put too many stakes but ideally you could put two stakes either side and that's just basically to catch the tree if you're going to put one stake Put the stake at the front this way. You don't want the tree to rub against the stake, but you want the stake effectively and the tie to catch the tree when it's moving its most, which would be the other way. Hopefully that makes sense. Rewind it. Watch it again if it doesn't, because I'm getting wet, so I'm going to start planting. So this tree, yep. Um, I've got my. Sick it is. So let's say. Okay, I don't really need to put any of these in. This goes in the hole. Where I need gloves because they're going to get muddy, but let's assume okay. Actually, I can do this. So, if you were going to stake the tree, it's best to actually stake the tree before put the stake in. This is only a bamboo cane because so I can't be bothered to stake it. Come closer because it might be windy. Um, hello. Uh, so what you want to do is actually put the stake in first so that you don't drive in stake through all of the roots of um, the tree once it's in the ground. Pop the tree in, in the in the correct fashion. So okay, I should put the stake on this side as I said. Pop the tree in, that'll be fine. Now the depth that you want to plant, you'll be able to uh, tell it's roughly, you want to have about six inches of rootstock shown. If you planted it below the graft union, some of these nodes would actually turn into roots and that's how you produce an own root tree. So if you select an M27 rootstock, which is quite weak, the roots of the, the variety will outcompete the roots of the, um, uh, the rootstock, the M27. Eventually, you'd actually get quite a big tree, which is interesting. So you'd put it in the ground, you plant it. This is going to get messy. Quite um, in the soil again. Now, you want to ideally put soil back in. You do not want to put in some sort of compost. If you put compost in, you're sort of condemning your tree to never really outgrowing uh, the, the, the hole you've dug because the, the compost is a completely different medium to soil. Although it's like it is brown or black and it looks similar, soil, uh, compost is effectively organic matter. Soil only contains something like 5% organic matter. It's mostly made up of crushed up tiny bits of like rock basically. Um, and also, comp so compost dries out, it behaves so differently. It looks, compost is a growing medium which we use in containers, but that is not what you want to plant your tree in. Um, your, tr your tree will suffer quite badly if you're, you're growing it in compost. 
<laughs> so, sorry, I think the wind might be strong. So yeah, as you can see, this is quite a bad job. Of as you can see, that is now in the ground. It's quite messy, but I can't be bothered to do a better job. Tap it down, tap it down. Everything's really <laughs> great. Go in the house if you want kids. My kids are here to uh, observe. So that is now in the ground there. I'm just going to dry my hands. Um, if you want to. Um, So, um, the tree's now in the ground, that should be fine there, but just as an extra precaution... Frank Dunning. <laughs> Frank Dunning, can you go with Primrose, please? Uh, just as an extra precaution now, you can tie in the tree, so that the tree is um, secure. So you can use these sorts of ties quite comfortably. Tie in the tree, um, as I said, this will, this, will, this will help the tree grow vertically rather than sort of crooked. Uh, things that can cause the tree to grow crooked, wind and also the weight of fruit. So that's why we also encourage you not to have fruit on the tree in the first year. And yeah, uh, afterwards you would come to prune the tree, but because it's really wet, I need to get my kids indoors. I won't prune. But anyway, thank you very, very much for watching this video. Didn't expect it to rain. I might redo it. Uh, have a good new year.